Greetings, friends, and welcome to worship. My name is Pastor Bruce Dickerson, and I'm the lead pastor here at Jerome Church. We're so happy that you've joined us for worshiping the Lord this day. We'll be continuing our series, Jesus Sightings. Have we discussed the previous couple of weeks, Jesus appeared post-resurrection to his disciples at least 10 separate times in the Gospels, and John tells us, actually, that Jesus appeared to many of his disciples the 40 days between resurrection and the ascension, uh, that Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples. So the exact number of appearances we don't know, but we do know Jesus appeared, and we believe he appeared for two different reasons. One, to prove and show that he was alive, and also to continue to teach his disciples. Let's now join together in praise and song. stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night. You tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. Every time I tried to 
stand and start to fall All those lonely roads that I have traveled on There was Jesus When the life I built came crashing to the ground When the friends I had were no see it then, but I can see it now. There was Jesus. In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing and the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment of where I've been, and I am the Director of Family Ministry here at Jerome. All month long, Jerome kids have been on an adventure learning that Jesus overcame death, Jesus connects us to each other, and Jesus encourages us. Your challenge today is to build a mountain. You can use anything you want, blocks, pillows, books, even marshmallows. How tall can you make your mountain? Have you ever thought about climbing a real mountain? Mount Everest is a really tall mountain, almost 30,000 feet. It might seem impossible to even think about climbing a mountain that tall. Climbing mountains is tough work, but having the right equipment and being with the right people make it possible. Sometimes the things Jesus asks us to do in our lives seem impossible. But when we have Jesus, Jesus gives us the strength we need to get the job done. We are stronger with Jesus. Here's Pastor Bruce to help us take a closer look at Jesus.
Would you pray with me, friends? Gracious Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today comes from the book of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciples whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say it, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from the shore, about a hundred yards. Then they landed. They saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you were old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone also will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, Follow me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I always get a little bit reflective in the month of April. And this past month, it's been 18 years since my father passed away. So it's been that time that I always reflect and think about all the things that we had planned to do once life slowed down. You know life. Like for me, I was getting out of college, I was getting married, trying to figure out what to do with my life, what to do with a family. Once those things slowed down, my dad and I had planned, and he was trying to slow down from work, was starting to think about retirement. Dad and I talked about fishing trips, camping trips, hunting pheasants, traveling out west to visit my sister on a joint family vacation. But the busyness of the day got in the way. Now, I wish I could say after 18 years of being reflective, that I've been better at this kind of thing, about not putting off the important things. But let's face it, being a husband, being a father, being a pastor, I always fall to what I refer to as the tyranny of the urgent, that which needs done immediately. And I miss things around me. I know that I have no doubt. I wish I could say that I stop and smell the roses and do things that were important all the time. 
but it's hard. So what could I possibly be missing? Well, it could be opportunities with my family and loved ones. That's probably true. That probably happens over time. I wish I could say it doesn't, but it does. And the snap of my fingers, my baby girl is gone through being a toddler to being an elementary school student to being in high school. And the time has just flown by. We've had three moves. We've moved to different cities and different places and she's been in different schools. And so there's always a tyranny of the urgent. My wife has changed jobs. The tyranny of the urgent. What else could I be missing? Um, am I missing out on a once in a lifetime opportunity here and there? I hope not, but it's, it's possible. But as a pastor, there's actually one thing that scares me more than anything else that I'm missing. Am I missing recognizing Jesus in the day to day? This possibility frightens me the most, but it's not unheard of. Look at the disciples following the resurrection, their reaction. Many of them did not recognize Jesus. On the stories of Jesus seeing his disciples after the resurrection, several times we see Jesus having conversations with his disciples without them even realizing it's, it's the Lord. At least not right away. You see, they don't recognize him until he does something familiar. For Mary outside the tomb, Mary Magdalene, it was when she ran up to who she believed was the gardener. And he turned around and called her name and said, Mary. And she said, Rabboni, Rabbi. For the disciples on the road to Emmaus that we discussed the first week, they didn't see Jesus. They spent the whole day traveling with him, but they didn't see them until they stopped. And he took bread, gave thanks to the Lord, broke it, and as he gave it to them. And they realized they were in the presence of the Lord. In today's lesson, for Peter and James and John, it was when Jesus led them to this miraculous catch. You see, if this story sounds familiar, it's because it's happened before. When Jesus approached a group of fishermen, including Simon on a boat, and asked if they had caught anything. And they said, no. And they, he said, put your nets over on the other side. And they caught such a haul within their nets that they called friends and relatives out to help them get it to shore. There were so many fish. And it was in this moment that Jesus said, follow me. And they followed. And so once again, they find themselves there on the shore, fishing all night long. And they knew the best time to catch fish was in the silence of the night. Yet all night they hadn't caught anything. And this man appears on shore and says, have you caught anything? And they say no. And he says, lower your nets on the other side. And their nets were filled. And it's that moment that the disciple whom Jesus loved said, it's the Lord. And Peter, in all his excitement, puts on his outer clothing and dives into the ocean to get to the Lord. It was in this miracle that they realized that they were once again in the presence of Jesus. Just like the disciples, we too get preoccupied with what we are doing, that we miss the movement that Jesus sets right in front of us. Sometimes maybe it's not because Jesus looks the way we think he would. Maybe it's because we don't expect to see him work. Sometimes it's just within our busyness. We don't always recognize Jesus, but Jesus knows how to make himself familiar to his disciples. And the miracles and the words and the breaking of the bread. 
Where have you seen Jesus in your lives? Now, it isn't the same for everyone, but Jesus knows us so well that it can be custom made for you and I. So brothers and sisters, I ask the question again, where have you seen Jesus recently? Have you reached out? Have you fed the hungry? Have you clothed the naked? Have you visited and taken care of the sick? Jesus told us these are the places he will be. Maybe we just need to slow down and look. Brothers and sisters, have a blessed beat week. Go look for Jesus. He's there. Amen.
It's good to be with you in worship today. My name is Sarah Merriweather, and I am the Director of Connections here at Jerome. As we begin this new season together and look for sightings of our risen Jesus in our lives, there are many ways that you can take your next steps on your faith journey here at Jerome. I invite you to open up your Church Center app during these next few minutes so that you can follow along and easily connect to ways to volunteer and to sign up. If you don't have the app yet, you can scan the QR code that's on the screen and follow the instructions below to connect with us. And while you're in the app, I want to encourage you to complete your Connect card. You can also find the link to complete a Connect card today along with lots of other information in today's video description. Coming up in these next couple of weeks, we are launching two new group learning opportunities for you to join in. Whether you are already part of a small group or are just looking to try out a study for the first time, I hope that you will consider being a part of one or both of these studies. The first study begins this Wednesday, April 28th, and is the Renewed Study, which is geared toward women. This is a five-week daytime study meeting in person or online. The second opportunity is the Pastor Study on the Parables of Jesus. This is a six-week study beginning on May 9th and will meet online and in person on Sundays at 5.30 p.m. You can learn more about these studies and register through the Events tab in your Church Center app and in the links found in today's video description. During the months of April and May, we are collecting items to pack 10 flood or cleaning buckets for UMCOR. These buckets will be sent to help families begin the very difficult work of cleaning up after a flood or other natural disaster. You can shop for items directly from the Amazon wish list through the QR code on the screen or in today's links. Then mark your calendar for May 16th, where we will gather to pack these buckets after our 10.30 a.m. in-person worship service. Be sure to check out the Church Center app and today's links for additional ways that you can get involved and volunteer in any one of our local missions, such as Soup for the Soul, which is always looking for drivers and servers to serve each week on Friday afternoons. When you give to Jerome Church, you are funding important missions like Soup for the Soul and ministries like our small groups and classes, and you're supporting all of the ways that the people of Jerome Church are living out the mission of loving God and loving people. Our church is counting on all of us to give regularly to keep this mission alive. You can give today through the Church Center app or by texting the word GIVE to 614-587-7871. Giving is also available through ACH or Bill Pay, or you can mail a check to Jerome Church at the address below. Let's now continue to worship this morning as our choir leads us in our closing song.
Amen. What do you need Jesus to give you strength to do this week? Jesus is always with us, and we are stronger than we know because of that. You can find more encouragement and strength in community. I encourage you to join one of our upcoming studies and stop by our Jerome Church or Jerome Kids Facebook groups throughout the week. Have a great week. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am.